Protests erupting in Atlanta this weekend and some turning violent after a fatal police shooting of a black man during a struggle. We want to warn you, this surveillance video of this incident is disturbing as the suspect allegedly grabbed the stun gun from an officer and was later shot in the back. This raising questions about the use of police force. One of the officers involved has been fired, another now on administrative leave, while Atlanta's police chief has resigned. Joining me right now is House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. And Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Unfortunately, there is massive unrest across our country. Seattle, pure lawlessness taking place. I know that you are readying to introduce legislation on policing this upcoming week. What can Congress do? Well, Congress can do a lot. And if I could first start about what transpired in Atlanta. Uh, the loss of life should always be the last resort. How I pray I wish this had turned out differently. Um, I mourn with Rayshard's family today. There was something that um, his attorney said last night, and this, this needs to be investigated thoroughly. But he talked about de-escalation. And that's what we're talking about in our legislation, that we're working with Senator Tim Scott. I spoke with the senator last night. Better training. What is an officer to do to be able to de-escalate when someone points a taser at them? Um, accountability. Not only just the training, but also the transparency that body cams, so everybody can see what is transpiring, so when an investigation is done thoroughly. And then the ability, if there is a bad officer, how are you able to remove them and they're not able to go to another department? These are all things that are very important. Unfortunately, Democrats think the best thing to do is remove money, and they praise the removal of money of police officers. I believe a greater training, a greater transparency, and a greater accountability is a place to solve much of this problem. Now we have chaos. You look what is happening in Seattle today. I mean, instead of having peace and prosperity, you have chaos and you have warlords over Woketown. There, 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 are, there are things that are being said that they're using chokeholds, that they're searching individuals who actually live there that there is not a idea of freedom within this socialism that they believe there should not be police peace or even Paul patrol cartoons yeah. on television anymore well I mean shouldn't we know when somebody has infractions already I mean when you look at at the case of last week where that officer had 17 infractions already should there be a register of some sort so that we know and understand where there could be trouble and vulnerabilities in a certain police yeah. officer. Yes, we talk about that now. The FBI actually has a reporting, a reporting ability to do this, but only 45% of the departments participate. It should be. It's never the first time does a bad officer get caught. Um, these reports should actually have another eye to look upon this. It should not be a cleared record when they terminate the individual, so could, then they can go to another department. What we're finding as well is there's a recent study, a survey went out to all police chiefs. Eighty percent of them are asking for more training. That's exactly what we need in a situation like this to de-escalate and others. But these bad officers, and remember, 99 percent of these officers put their life on the line every day. They come when they are called. They rush into these buildings or fires and others when someone is firing a gun at them to protect us. Those are the individuals that we want right. to make sure. So there's many times that people rush rush to judgment and are trying to produce legislation that are going to make good officers leave the department. We want to make sure we have the very best, yeah. have transparency, accountability and performance in what we do moving forward so we protect life at the so, same time. So walk us through this upcoming week. The Democrats will also be passing their own legislation. What will this week look like in terms of your policing legislation? Well, there, there will be a markup on Wednesday. As we continue to work with Senator Tim Scott, we're, we're hopeful that we will roll out legislation this week. The markup on Wednesday inside the Judicial Committee inside the House, the Democrats have proposed legislation. I have spoken with Karen Bass and others. What I think should happen at this moment in time is not parties play any games. We should work together to restore, rebuild, and renew America. And that, that comes with working together in this situation as well. And I think there's a capability of doing that. Unfortunately, it, what, they have not worked with Republicans at the beginning. We have reached out. I think there'll be an opportunity here to be able to do that. Hopefully, they'll allow a substitute. Hopefully, they'll allow amendments. If they have an open process that everybody can offer ideas, I believe at the end of the day, you will see Congress come together, 
rise to the occasion to make sure we strive to be that more perfect union we know we can be. Yeah, because there's just no room for any bad apples in the police force. We know that. I mean, it's just uh, one is too many. I want to get your take also on stimulus, yeah. though, because we're talking about uh, an economy that is also perhaps getting impacted here. We were at a point where we were about to reopen, and now you've got looters across the country making it even worse. What kind of a stimulus would you like to see in phase four? Are you even discussing that right now, or do you want to wait until the CARES Act plays out and see where that money went? Well, the first thing I always want to do is make sure the, the $3 trillion that we appropriated is actually instituted into the nation. It's implemented out there. And we show that it's working, that uh, PPP for small businesses, uh, I know you were shocked when you read the jobs number that, no, it wasn't 10 million or 8 million jobs lost, but 2 million that were actually created. I've heard, heard from many small businesses that it actually has saved them. Now, not all states have opened up the same as others. We should gather that data and see where we need more help in that situation. The one thing we are hearing from businesses across the country is liability protection. Trial lawyers are out there advertising today, suing schools, going after small businesses that are making decisions to close. We need to give them protection as we move forward so they can keep working. How do we rebuild and renew America? Those are the things that we'll be looking at. And does it need more resources going yeah. forward? We have talked with the secretary. We've talked with the president. Uh, Leader McConnell and myself have been meeting together. And we will build something, especially if we have the data coming in. But what we will not do is write a bill for political purposes like Nancy Pelosi did. That she put $3 trillion up there on things that had nothing to do with COVID. In their bill, it mentioned cannabis more than it mentioned jobs. Whatever we do will be focused on America and building it back. All right. We know you're working hard on it. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much.